28 and 1, Deuteronomy. 28 and 1, as you are standing and turning, I will pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for these your saints, God, your faithful, Lord God. We thank you for the desire to have another dip, Lord. Lord, we ask that you continue, Lord, to grow us, to mature us, Lord God. Take us to the next level in you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the word that has gone forth all day today, Lord God. Thank you for the power and the diligence of those that sought him in order to bring forth such a word. Thank you for our pastor, God. Continue to rejuvenate him. Continue to impart your knowledge. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. He may be seated. The title of tonight's lesson is, And It Is So. And It Is So. Some things you just have to believe because God told you so. We can believe what every Tom, Dick, and Sally may have said, but we have a hard time just believing in the word of God. If God tells you to do something, you just have to do it. Every time the wind blows and the leaves shake, we think that that's a ram in a bush for us to get out of what God has already placed in us. But baby, you ain't Abraham and you are not sacrificing Isaac. You got to know that if God said it, that settles it. Isaiah 14 and 24, the Lord of hosts have sworn, saying, surely as I have thought, so shall it shall come to pass. And as I have pur purposed, so shall it stand. My pastor was the one that taught me the meaning of the word amen. If you understand it fully, you will see its power. See, amen means so be it. It is an affirmation meaning and it is so. He told me that we pray in the name of Jesus in order to get to God because the only way we get to God is through his son. But when we end the prayer, we end with amen and say and it is so, speaking the, that thing into existence. Too often times we praying and we praying and we just sending out words and we don't believe it in our own hearts. We don't believe it for ourselves. But the word, the fact that you put the amen on it, that means you putting a stamp of absoluteness on it. You putting in a stamp of affirmation saying that it is so. Luke 8 and 11, now the parable Mm, sorry. So many of us are living under the negative words of our parents, our past lives, our mistakes, and we allow them to put a seed on the inside of us. Words themselves are synonymous with seeds. Luke 8 and 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So we understand that words themselves are seeds. They germinate, they grow. That's why we come to get a word so it can get on the inside of us, germinate and grow. If we are allowed to put the right seed on the inside, we get the right growth on the inside. Those words that were negative to us and they impregnated us with fear and doubt and low self-esteem. Next thing we know, the next thing we do, we give birth to that which is inside of us and it stops us from going after what God told us we can have and what we can do. Matthew 14 and 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? I'm here to tell you tonight that it's okay to abort that thing. See, you've been impregnated with negativity from your family, from your past life, from your parents, because everybody ain't tell you the good things about life. Everybody ain't tell you the good things about yourself. Everybody ain't say good things to you. So you were impregnated with that thing. I'm telling you right now, it's okay to abort that tonight. I'm telling you right now that whatever was inside of you that was germinating on the inside of you, that was the wrong seed. You need to get the wrong seed out of your life uh, Get the wrong seed out of your spirit. Get the wrong seed out of your heart. I'm telling you, God is telling you right now, that thing is killing you. It's trying to kill you. You need to abort it out of your life. He's trying to keep you from reaching your potential. Whatever that's in you trying to impregnate you right now, whatever that's impregnating your body that's growing on the inside, that's keeping us thinking that we ain't worthy, keeping us thinking that we shouldn't be the one, keeping us thinking that we shouldn't be here. I have heard it too many times, and God don't put it in my spirit. You need to speak to that people that think that they're not good enough. You need to speak to that enemy that's on the inside of these women. You need to speak to the enemy and let them know that we are born you tonight. You are part of me tonight. You are gone from me tonight. I'm telling you, and it is so, that God said it shall come to pass. If God tells us that it shall come to pass, you got to know that if God says it, that settles it. The thing is a thing, whatever God makes it to be. Every time a joker told you that you were not pretty enough, that 
you were not young enough, that you were not smart enough, not worthy enough, not tall enough, not thin enough, not light enough, not dark enough. Every time that he told you something like that, abort that crap out your life right now. Unshackle yourself from the cares of this world. God didn't, God don't care where you've been. He's more interested in where you're going. He knows where he wants to send you. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. When God said it shall come to pass, when he says that it shall come to pass, shall is the will. So if God said it shall, that means it will come to pass. Whatever he spoke over you, it will come to pass. And the fact that, that is like saying amen at the end of prayer. It is so. The reason why some people are so much more successful than others is because they didn't have to overcome some of the negative seeds that were planted in their lives. My success is rooted and grounded in my parents and that they have told me as a little girl. Just because my parents may have told me some good things, your parents may not have told you any good things. Doesn't mean that I'm better than you. It's just that you got a little bit more to go because you have been held back by the negativity that's placed in your life. It's like running a hurdle race. If you have more hurdles to jump over, it is going to take you a longer time to win. But winning is still an option. Winning is still an option. It doesn't matter what they said. You got to know what God is telling you right now. Because if the spirit of the Lord was in the word that they were speaking to you, then you could have germinated faster and moved on further. But that's all right. We can't worry about what happened in the past. All we're worrying about now is what the Bible says, what the word of God says, because that's the right seed to place on the inside of us. We've been messing around with the wrong seed, the seed of contamination, the seed of craziness, the seed of darkness. I'm telling you now the word is light and the light is all in the inside of us. All we got to do is let that thing grow. Let it go even higher in us. We get so upset when God, when he doesn't give what we, when he doesn't give us what we want from him, but he tells us plain and simple that we can have it. We just have to sell out to him. Deuteronomy 28 and 1, and it shall come, come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently, that means listen diligently. Listening diligently is not just, oh, I came and I sat in service. When you're listening diligently, you write these notes down. You're giving God the glory. You're giving God the praise. You're not watching the pastor as like he's a movie. You're watching him as he's speaking something in your life. You're watching him to know that he's taking you higher in every word that's coming out of his mouth. That's when you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. That means you just can't listen diligently and go out and do whatever you want to do. You can't listen diligently and I'm just going to ignore all the commandments. You can't listen diligently and live life any way I want to live. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says observe and do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. See, God is a God of order. He's a God of order. And if you know that God is a God of order, and you say that you are a child of God, there's no way that you can be a child of God and live outside of order. It just doesn't fit. Because he raises us with a spirit of order. So we got to live our life in that spirit of order. Peter took his eyes off God in the midst of a miracle. Only way you can have a miracle is if God gives it to you. For some of us, it's a miracle being in church. For some of us, it's a miracle that you were able to turn your life around enough to be able to be in the house of the Lord on a Sunday night. For some of us, it's a miracle that you were able to get out of the mess that you was in and be able to sit here healthy, strong. It's a miracle. And you think in the midst of your miracle, you're going to be crazy like Peter and turn your back on God in the midst of a miracle, living life the way you're living right now, getting away with what you're getting, what you have now, living and getting, getting away from whatever you had you bound, and you think you're going to turn your face on God right now? Don't be like Peter. Keep your eye on God. Keep your eye on God and keep walking in your miracle, because your miracle gave you a second chance. This miracle is giving you another way in order to do the things the right way. This is a miracle in your life. Don't turn your back on God. The three Hebrew boys 
survived the fiery furnace. Why? Because God stepped in and covered them. Cute? Or the outfit that they wore is because they were doing God's will. You know, God will do some special things for those that's doing his will. God will open some special doors for those that's doing his will. God will show you different ways for God that's, for those that's doing his will. See, we don't think that because we're in his will that we special. Yeah, you special just by the simple fact that everybody ain't doing his will. So if everybody ain't doing his will, you got to walk with the spirit of God and know who God is and understand what God is doing in your life. He didn't pick you because you got long hair. He didn't pick you because you were light-skinned. He didn't pick you because you 36, 24, 36. The devil is a liar. God picked you because you're doing his will. God picked you because you're here on Sundays, because you're here on Wednesdays, because you're here on Fridays. Hallelujah. You're doing God's will. Hallelujah to the woman of God. Number three, the woman with the issue was healed not because of pity, but because she pushed. Pushed through the crowds and barriers just to have a touch of Jesus. The blessings over your life is too legit for you to quit on it. Just like she understood that it was more than her life than this issue of blood. It was more than her life than this infirmity. It's more than my life than living like this. I'm going to keep pushing until I get what God has told me that I can have. I'm going to keep pushing because God's blessings are too legit to quit. I'm going to keep pushing until I get what God said that I will do. Hear me. Your pretty can't help you. Your sexy can't help you. It's your spirit that will allow you to get what God has for you. And what God has for you, it is for you. We spend more time on our outfit than we do on our spirit. We do more time on our hair than we do on our spirit. Let your hair be nappy, baby. You better have a straight spirit. You better know that God is trying to do something on the inside of you that your hairdo ain't going to work, your shoe size ain't going to fit. I don't care who you try to copy. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost to come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto them both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This is why I'm not going through. That I'm not going through certain things in life that some of you may have to go through. Why? Because I'm older than you and you're younger than me, so you got to go through and see for yourself. But at this point in time in my life, I'm not going through no tryouts. I'm not going through no workouts. I'm not sitting through no interviews. What you see is what you get. If I'm not good enough right now, don't wait on me to get better because I'm already great. Oh, love me or leave me. I'm good with you now and I'm good without you now. God got me. If you will believe that in your core, you wouldn't keep accepting second best. God said that I am the head and not the tail, above all me and not the knee. Amen, and it is so. God said that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen, and it is so. God said that he will never leave me, nor forsake me. Amen, and it is so. God said no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. I said amen, and it is so. You got to be able to speak an amen in your spirit. You better be able to speak that it is so in your spirit. When my pastor showed me that I was supposed to be truly, totally persuaded in the word of God, they taught me that I got to get into this thing and believe the word for what the word says. Forget what everybody else told me. Forget what every lie that came across my face. I know that I can say amen, and it is so. Jesus came 42 generations to ensure that it is so. You better know who God is and how he's working in your life. 